What's up guys? Just wanted to make a quick video here providing some tuning options for those that are looking to go force induction with their E36. There are some different categories of options I would say as far as ECU platforms. So uh, there are some pros and cons to each. So I'm gonna go over those in this video. If you're new to the channel and wanna subscribe, that'd be awesome. Or leave a thumbs up on the video if you found this helpful. Um, so I've been actually tuning these cars for about five years now. And uh, I do have quite a bit of experience with each one of the options that I'm gonna be listing. So let's jump into it. Uh, the first option or category is actually gonna be the stock DME. So these cars are equipped with a MS41 DME. While they're pretty good with NA tunes and such, they kind of fall on their face as far as force induction. Now there are a couple companies out there, RK tunes, there's the TRM tuning package, which usually supplies um, a new mass airflow sensor and injectors to pair with it. Um, the stock air mass airflow sensor runs out of um, room to read airflow at pretty much one PSI of boost. So as soon as you start hitting boost with those the stock setup, it's gonna start maxing it out and can't really do much with it. A lot of people will trick the mass airflow sensors by creating a internal resistance or adding a resistor inline. And this kind of gives you a little more headroom as far as airflow that can be metered. Um, but the issue there is uh, you start losing resolution. So what uh, usually the TRM tune comes with a MAF that's a little bit more capable as far as reading airflow, but um, a lot of these cars that are tuned on the stock DME with boost, I usually have to go in and fix a lot of these customers' cars, and I usually recommend them going to a standalone ECU. So the issue lies in, it's a closed loop system, okay? So it's reading error coming in from the mass airflow sensor, and um, that's pretty much it and then it tells how much the injector to stay open from that amount of air that's coming in and all is fine. You start running into issues when you have any sort of intake track leak. So you can pretty much look at a stock car and introduce any kind of vacuum leak and you'll run into the same problem. And it's even more pronounced with a boosted car. So you're gonna run into drivability issues if you have any kind of leak, e even a the tiniest, tiniest leak. So they're very sensitive to airflow changes and usually drivability isn't the best either because the stock ECU, uh, as far as load control, it doesn't really understand speed density and we'll get into that in a second. Uh, there's a switchover point where it goes from open to closed loop and vice versa based on load. And this isn't really the best strategy for fueling. So you can end up with really unsafe fueling and two, you can run into some pretty odd fueling where it'll just dump fuel and you'll, you won't get good gas mileage or again, drivability will suffer. So I wouldn't recommend at all RK tunes. I've looked at at least 10 of his customers' cars and his tunes. He locks them down now so you can't actually see what he does in his, his force induction tunes and NA tunes, but I could tell you right now, he's kind of a hack job. So no, no to RK tunes. Um, the TRM stuff is pretty good, but again, you have to make sure that you do not have any intake track leak, leaks and that the diameter of the tubing that you're using is what TRM recommends or else it throws off the entire calibration that they set. So a lot of these tunes that you order are pretty cookie cutter. They take a car, throw it on a dyno, and um, they try to rely on the closed loop fueling to do any kind of corrections, like up to 10% um, from the actual reference car that they use to make this cookie cutter tune. So when it actually goes on your car and gets flashed, it may not be optimal for your specific setup. Um, if you have any kind of cams or any kind of, uh, you did porting to your head, 
or you have a M50 manifold versus stock manifold, all that stuff is gonna pretty much go out the window uh, unless TRM gives you a specific file for your setup, which is usually not the case. Those were the two stock DME options. Again, this is probably the lowest on my recommended list as far as, as tunes go and tuning solutions. So the second category are the true plug and play ECUs. So these are stock ECU replacements. And all you have to do is literally unplug the stock DME in the glove box area, plug these new computers in, and you're pretty much ready to go with a couple extra add-ons, which I'll talk about in a minute. So the first is actually the Megasquirt MS3 Pro. And those have been around for a long time, but it wasn't until recently for the E36 platform that they truly made this a plug and play without having to make any modifications. So it can actually run off the stock cam sensor. And that's a huge thing because the stock cam sensor is a Hall effect sensor and a lot of these ECUs have trouble reading and controlling that type of signal. So this is straight up plug and play and get going. So um, the Mega Squirt, I would highly recommend. That's probably one of my top options. Um, the only drawback is it does not come with a built-in wideband controller. So you'd have to add a wideband sensor and then feed a wire into uh, one of the expansion plugs on that ECU to get a good reading. And then the other thing is mm, you usually want to get a GM IET sensor because most of these ECUs run off of speed density, which means it needs a MAP sensor, so manifold pressure, and then it also needs intake air temp to figure out what the air density is coming into the motor. And again, that's a lot better strategy than the old mass airflow based tunes that I talked about earlier. The cool part with Mega Squirt and the next ECU I'm gonna be talking about is uh, they do have an auto-tune feature. So as long as you have your target AFR table set up correctly and what they're supposed to be, whether you're running normal, normal pump gas or ethanol, you can actually drive around and it'll set your volumetric efficiency table uh, correctly to get the, the right fueling to match those AFR targets and then you're pretty much tuned. And then of course you wanna get some dyno time to look at your timing tables and such or just use a base map. So that is option one for the plug and play ECUs. Number two is, and I've covered this in other videos on my channel, um, the VEMS ECUs. So there is a vendor now in the US that sells these locally. It used to be a Europe only thing. Um, I do have uh, an affiliate link to those guys uh, down below. So if you do feel like going with that option, I'll actually provide a $50 discount um, for anybody that wants to get a remote tune or local tune in Phoenix, Arizona with that ECU. So, um, I've been running those on four or five different customers' cars, including my own vehicle, which was supercharged. And they run actually pretty amazing. The auto-tune feature is super awesome. Um, it can compensate for a lot of environmental variables. So if you have, you know, you're going up in high elevation or you have knock or, or whatever, um, these ECUs can adapt perfectly fine to any, any condition. Um, you can set up safety features like uh, flashing the check engine light based on certain safety parameters that you set up. So let's say your coolant or intake temps go crazy high or you're leaning out too much. Um, that's, you can flash the check engine light to tell the, the driver that something is wrong. Um, but I believe the Mega Squirts also do this kind of feature as well. So um, the one thing that's good about the VEMS is it does have a built-in wideband controller. So literally all you have to do is plug in the wideband sensor and then they have a, a small pigtail harness for the GM air intake temp sensor. So that's also plug and play as well, which is kind of nice. The stock 
Intake air temp sensor is pretty slow to react. It's a very old school uh, resistor type of IET sensor. So it's recommended to use the, the newer GM sensors that pretty much any standalone ECU uses. It's a, it's a Delphi connector, pretty, pretty easy to set up. You just throw it in your charge pipe and good to go. So between the VEMS and Megasquirt MS3 Pro, I think those are the best two options on the list. And then the next category down is for more advanced users. And these are for people that may already have another plug and play ECU laying around um, or just want more advanced features from, from a specific vendor or they have a relationship or prior experience with a different vendor. But um, there are companies out there that sell patch harnesses that allow you to adapt to um, Helltech, MoTeC, Link ECUs, which I have a bunch of training videos on Link ECUs as well. Um, so all that patch harness does is you plug in the, the stock harness connector on the one side, and then it has a bunch of pigtails that connect to the connectors on your aftermarket ECU. So it kind of translates the wiring from the stock car to whatever ECU you're trying to adapt to. These are okay, um, but again, these are for more advanced people probably doing like high level motorsport stuff. So let's say drag racing at a competitive level, um, hill climb cars, crazy kind of builds where you require a lot more features than some of the more basic standalones. And not to say that some of those mid-tier ones can't do everything that the high-end ones can do, but there are things like traction control, uh, ABS modulation that like MoTeC and stuff is kind of the, the king at. And um, a lot of people actually end up going with like DCT transmissions, so you can have controllers for that that are integrated, which I'm not sure that the Megasquirt or VEMS would be able to support. So those are kind of your option breakdowns. Uh, again, if, if you are in the Phoenix area, Phoenix, Arizona area, or you want me to do a remote tune, um, I am very specialized in the Link ECUs, VEMS, and Megasquirt. I can tune all of those perfectly fine. I can tune your stock DMEs, do uh, uh, EWS deletes, emissions deletes, and stuff like that. So if you do have any questions or want to reach out for tuning services, you can hit me up on my Instagram at canyontuned or canyon.tuned and uh, just shoot me a message and I'll try to answer your questions or we can get a live tuning session started. So if you are remote, I have been doing uh, a screen share session where you know I remote into your laptop and then we start a little bit of tuning and I've had some pretty decent success with a lot of different ECUs doing that. So uh, again, if you're across the country, across the world, don't be hesitant to reach out. Uh, we could probably get your car dialed in. Um, if you do have any questions on a specific application and what ECU would be the best, you can also, again, either comment down below, I'll try to answer or hit me up on my Instagram. Um, that should be pretty much it for this video. Uh, I don't want to get too deep into the features of each one of these ECUs. I'll probably cover if some, someone ends up locally uh, getting on a, a Megasquirt ECU, I'll probably do a, another video covering that because I, I haven't before. But if you want to check some of my previous videos, I do have a bunch of videos on the VEMS and my E36 M3 that I had tuned on it and it ran perfectly, almost better than stock. So um, a lot of options out there, but again, I, I would stray away from the stock ECU. Uh, there is a, a couple tuners out there that have a custom version uh, or a custom software that goes on the stock DME. They call it MS41.3, it's a custom code. It can do speed density and it can do uh, flex fuel, stuff like that. But again, I, I don't really trust it because all the stock ECU stuff is based on how 
long an injector has to hang open in milliseconds. And that's a pretty primitive way of tuning fueling, if you think about it. Because if you want to swap injectors with bigger injector or smaller one, you're kind of screwed because you have this set defined table of uh, injector latencies and timings of, of opening at certain loads and airflow. As soon as you go changing you know, injectors to a bigger size or smaller, you're, you gotta do a full retune. And then a lot of these standalone ECUs, all you have to do is change some of the parameters and tell it what new injectors you're using. And because it's based on volumetric efficiency of the engine and not how much airflow is coming in, kind of a dummy closed loop system, right? Um, you don't have to do a retune if you're gonna be changing up your setup quite frequently. So I know a lot of people will start with smaller injectors and wanna go bigger ones when they run uh, more higher ethanol content, stuff like that, or higher boost levels and such. So um, again, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of different options out there. Um, back in like not even five, 10 years ago, they, there weren't even this many options for E36 tuning. So I think the industry has come a long way and um, whatever option you choose, I think it'll be the right move. Just make sure you do your own research and figure out you know, what's the best solution for your setup. So uh, again, see you guys on the next one. And if you like some of my other content or wanna follow the channel, I will be doing some aerodynamic modifications on the S2000 and preparing that for track season in the fall. So um, feel free to subscribe so you don't miss that video. And uh, thanks guys for watching.